single time. The mics are on, don't say anything better. Oh yeah, so the mics are on. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, Just roll set. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what plans uh, are being thought of for uh, my property uh, on Henry W. Du Bois, um, specifically for uh, drilling test wells for water sourcing. Uh, we did do a test well on the uh, north side of the property, and I would like to do another test well uh, on the south side of the property. And I just wanted to uh, see if there were any suggestions from this board uh, in, the, in um, either the way in which it's carried out or, um, or any other thoughts related to it. Since I'm new on this committee, um, I don't know about the project. Can you just give me a little? Uh, sh sure. Um, Where is the new well? Uh, the well that was drilled uh, is over here. Yeah, I know about that one. Where's the one you plan to drill? Uh, where I'd like to drill is where the uh, area is down here. Interesting. So how would you access that? Uh, so, um, Rich, do you want Rich, me to yeah, give some background first, yeah, and then because okay. it's a great question, and uh, that's been discussed already. So, um, so uh, I live on this property. It's uh, 30 acres. Uh, and where is this? Uh, this is on Henry W. Du Bois, between uh, North Mannheim and um, I guess Millbrook Road. So, uh, do you know where Duzine Road is that comes out to Main Street? It's uh, pretty much across from New Paltz Gardens. Gardens. That apartment Colonial Arms. Arms. Across on the left side of the road? Wait. On the north side. <laughs> As I drilled a well uh, for my house, uh, it's going back to 11 years ago, and um, the flow I got out of that well was um, 100 plus gallons a minute. So um, I was thinking there would be a good source on this property for water, uh, potentially for the village. So um, recently, back in the spring, I drilled a test well. Uh, at the end of the old paper street um, back here and we're estimating that one's about 40 gallons a minute and i'd like to drill another test well over here uh, to see what kind of flow i get there and the reason i'm looking to do it here is uh, from a geological standpoint it's where the streams converge is tends to be good fissures for um, water flow out of the well well i definitely prefer that location um, because it's much closer to Henry W. Sure. and further from the edge of the Millbrook Preserve and what's designated as a beaver habitat. So that's, it's also down, oh, you're already down at the bottom of the hill, so you're not going to have the same amount of uh, effluvia or whatever that stuff is that come out, comes out when you drill a well. But how are you going to I'm get sorry. there? We still haven't got to Oh, Her question sorry. is to what he's got, or what he anticipates. Well, I, did, I, I don't understand the plan at all. I'm right, sorry, right. because oh. I, I... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... He, there, the oh. village needs water, so he's looking on his property to see if he can get some. Well, I think her so. question, though, was what, what are his plans for the property and developing it? He's oh. got some type of vision that he sees for this piece of property. Right, That's right. What because, right. right. You're assuming I do. Okay, I don't. I, yeah. I've, <laughs> How much it's how within your own property? right. It's fine. <laughs> uh, the property is, property. I think, in total about 30 acres. It's 29 maybe in change. Um, okay. 
so uh, this this map here is the uh, latest subdivision that I did where I have uh, three lots behind my house uh, I've done nothing up on the other side of the property it's an old subdivision from the late 50s and um, right now I'm thinking you know some kind of uh, residential that's what the zoning is. So you might be putting up a development yourself? Uh, sure. Yeah, I've had the property since 2004. I've been kind of, you know, thinking of different things. I'm, I haven't been in much of a rush to do anything. Uh, so this would be potentially a win-win because it would be water for the village, but also if you do develop the property, it would be water that you could be... Uh, yes, that we would tap into because we are part of the village uh, now. I annexed this property from the town uh, into the village a few years ago. So um, I do have water and sewer uh, rights with it. So, so like that said, would provide. Me. I mean, currently, I would just have to go to Henry W. Boyce. But um, I think if I did find water, I could tap in. You know, anywhere. You wouldn't have yeah. to. Okay. So these were um, these lots were granted at a time when uh, there wasn't the impetus to. Uh, or the understanding that we needed to cluster our development. You've got these, and also that it's not a great idea to put houses on a really steep slope. If you've ever walked back here, it's so steep, it's not just steep this way, it's steep this way. You're like, on the, almost like a cliff. It's like very, very steep. So, I mean, I would just say from, from the get-go, I would think about clustering this over here instead of having a whole bunch of little houses mm -hmm. along the edge of this ridge, which is really beautiful. I would suggest everybody walk it. It's very beautiful, but it's very steep. And uh, it's also, you know, there's this, this stream down here is very nice. And um, there's like paths that go back through there too. Um, but if you look over here, like these lots are right near here. I mean, I almost wouldn't want the street to go through. Do you know what I mean? Because if the street doesn't go through, so you won't be having yet another street off of Henry W. where you already have all these stop signs and everything. They would just come in here and then maybe come in here. This isn't just, this isn't paved. Like if you go up, if you go up Henry W., you see there's Harrington Street, mm -hmm. right? And then if you cross the street to the north, it continues as like a path. It's not paved on the other side. It's a paper street, they call it. Well, paper? They call them it's paper It's on streets. paper, but it's not really it's a developed. It's a street right yeah. now. I, I kind of remember when I was in college, I lived in those apartments, and I remember we would walk back there. When, like when, it was yeah, when I bought the property, it was a dirt road. Right. And I blocked it with some of the big concrete blocks to prevent, because people were cutting through and driving through fast and everything. Oh, yeah. So I put concrete blocks at the one end to prevent people. So now it's just. You know, I haven't trimmed it or done anything, so it's just all grown over, except for where people walk. Just, just a question. On the left side, you said you had three lots. How big were the lots? Uh, they're uh, just under two acres each. And then the subdivision that was, that you kind of, was grandfathered in with, on the other side, those are much smaller lots? Uh, those are one-third of an acre. Oh, they're really little. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. Uh, the R1, it's, property is currently in R1 zone which is third acre also. So I mean, it's uh, the typical lot size surrounding it is one-sixth of an acre in the R2 district. Um, across the street is uh, Harrington Street, that's R2, uh, which allows one-sixth, but most of those lots are one-third acre lots. Uh, I, I agree with Rachel, uh, I'm a big proponent of clustering, and I think clustering makes sense, so. There's no plans this right now to develop that property, which is some of the wells, right? Correct. Yes. So right now, my my focus is on wells. First two. <laughs> so uh, back to Rachel's first question on access to the well. Um, uh, it was uh, suggested that I use the existing trail um, to uh, create an access road down there because if if it were ever to become a full trail system back there as part of like say the extension of the Millbrook Reserve. Um, that having a, the service road, so to speak, and the trail being one is has the least amount of impact. Versus so where that one house is now, 
it's like a house right there. Yes, yeah, so that's the old farmhouse for the farm that used to be there. But you, that house looks like it was renovated. Uh, was it or not? We, we, re, we repainted it, fixed it up. Uh, 2006 or 2007. Yeah, it was. Uh, so the path that you would you would make kind of a road. Well, we would road. use the Harrington Street and then just veer off where the right now the path veers off mm -hmm. Harrington yeah. Street. So yeah, that's a very uh, that's very steep down there. So I wonder if there's any way you could come in. I mean, you're on this side of it. You're going to well, you're going to drill on 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 the um, west side of the of the street. Correct. That, that's so currently that's, the plan. That's a very uh, that's an interesting one. I mean, that's, that's kind of like the stream kind of, there's like little kind of islands, you know, the stream kind of spreads out right there. Well, here is where the two streams converge. The stream, yeah. <clears throat> the, the stream that comes uh, from the south is uh, used to flow through where New Paltz Gardens is now. It used to be a stream, and they just filled it and put it, a pipe in. Right. So that used to flow over to the middle school, which also used to be a stream, but they filled that in, made those athletic fields. So this is the end of that stream uh, that flows through this way. This this side is, I think, tributary 13 proper that comes down from Old Mill, uh, crosses Old Mill Row, Road, crosses uh, North Putt, uh, goes under the freeway. So uh, those two streams converge right here, uh, and that's <coughs> supposedly where one wants to uh, explore. Because that would be a sign of uh, two fissures coming together. I'm wondering if you couldn't come in in front of <clears throat> that house. There's a path down at the bottom there. Instead of coming in this path There's... and going veering down the hill. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure how feasible that is. Maybe the upper driveway can access, but you're still going to hit the steep part here. It wouldn't be as much, though. I think the thinking was to come along the contours, uh, but I think no matter what, we have to uh, go perpendicular to the contours here. Uh, this, you can see this uh, indentation here. Uh -huh. uh, that was an old gravel mine um, where they dug out for uh, like bank run gravel, mm -hmm. and that's all stuff just thrown in there so you can't really get through there. It's actually steeper than anywhere else, so I would have to stay on this side of it. If I were on the downslope side, I'd be too close to the street, I think. Uh, the only other possible way is to, to cut through here like that, but I'd rather not. No, that's not, that's not. Uh, I can look into using the uh, upper driveway that's what I was thinking. Uh, but the problem is the. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's, everything's gravel. But the uh, beach field for that house is right there, and I'm not sure if I can fit between the beach field and the little barn that's there. So, uh, your suggestion, Rachel, is to not try to <coughs> use the existing trail. Yeah, well, or to use, rather use a gravel driveway rather than a trail. Well, I mean, I have well, a gravel road here. Yeah. Which is going to bring me in about just as far. Right. No, um, I'm just this, thinking rather than going down a hill like that. I, I think I, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I will certainly look into that because you might be right. I might save having to uh, come down this part from Harrington Street down to here. Uh, I don't know what stands in the way here uh, as far as trees and so on. And any other obstacles. So. I certainly will look into that here. One thing that you didn't mention that I think it's important for um, EPB to know is that, is this the one that has the line with the critical area on it or not? It's uh, outside yes, it of the critical area. Right, which the critical uh, area is yeah, right shows, there. So, yeah, shows, but he has the line right on there, so I thought that was worthy of note. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the beavers, you know, they move up and down the stream area. It's interesting that they done that because where I live, uh, you know, we live on Mare's Trail, that's where my family lives, and the DEC has come in there and killed our beavers, so 
I protested. I did everything they told me they were going to arrest me. Yeah, they're the only ones that are allowed to do that. Well, somebody they do it. The beavers on on you know, on the mail trail you head towards Garden. Yeah, they were two o eight. Well, you should what, report it. What? Oh, well, they came and they tracked. Right now, I mean this one. If okay. they're not. No, the other ones because they said it was flooding horse and den, and they kept flooding horse and den. And I said it's my property. This was all my property. And they went to the one spot by the road and they trapped them and they killed them. So that's hard. They really. I'm need glad them. they're protecting some somewhere. So. But you're right. They typically. I mean, you know better than me. They typically, if they like a spot, they like it. They don't travel that far. They may meander a little bit, but. Right. Well, they have babies, and right. the babies have to find a place to right. live. Right. There's so that. They move up and down right. depending on when they have enough food, and they bring with them all the wildlife, all the all the birds, and all the biodiversity is because of the beavers. So, yeah, we. I don't. I've never seen them down that far. But I've been on the real trip. Yeah, it's on the periphery of the there was um, an area. critical beaver area. Yes, you're, you're, they you're, were dams there, and there there are no beavers there anymore. I know. I don't Wait, know. where was that? I like they, that was a I'd park colony. They, I would park by. Um, it wasn't Bosey's. It was beef. I guess where the net zero is when you were allowed uh -huh. to park in there, and go over that little bridge, and you'd walk, and there's that tree that looks like a person. There's that really bizarre tree, and it's right there. I think I know you mean. Yeah, the, the tree that I've taken pictures. <laughs> it has a nose and a face and everything. Um, and there were beaver dams all along there. And there's no... And on the other side of the street, too. Right. Well, yeah, even though you didn't have a good experience with DC, when you see things like that, you should let them know. Because it's I'm illegal scared. in New York. Oh, if they disappear? It's illegal in New York to kill beaver. DC it's them. Yeah. I don't know that it was them. Oh, it was the DC. Oh, it was them? Oh, yeah. Okay. I was out there with the police. They sent the police out because I wouldn't let Thank them. Thank you. But it didn't do it. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm just happy to hear that there's an area there that's protected. Yeah, this is part of uh, Hudsonia's uh, initial investigation from like 15 years ago. Uh, and they started looking into the preserve. So I have a couple questions, but my mouth shut because I want to let you guys do your thing. So, we know what I do. Uh, does anyone have questions? Well, we had discussed um, trying to get data from people around the area where you're dwelling so that we can have a full understanding of what the impacts are. Because you have to have a baseline to know how it's being affected. So, we were thinking that. We should have some kind of a survey, and you know, get the well log data from the people surrounding the aquifer, so that we have this baseline. We know how it's being affected. We know what kind of quality of water people have. That would be step two after drilling this well. I think I would then go to that. Depending on what we find, that would be the next step. From after drilling the test well. Yeah. What what pressure are you looking to find? You said the other well was uh, forty. Uh, like flow wise, flow. I think. Uh, this, this, uh, and you may be able to answer this better. It sounds like the village wants areas that where they can get about 100 gallons a minute range, which I guess I don't know what what triggers that amount. I haven't asked, but it might have to do with efficiencies of having a pump station and uh, chlorination and all that. Maybe it makes it all worthwhile when you get up to that number. And maybe anything less than that, it becomes too expensive to try to treat the water. Um, we're currently getting about 600 gallons per minute from New York City. So I guess the idea is to replace as much of that as possible. You're saying and then they treat it chlorinate it? They chlorinate all the yeah. water? And we we, the we do. Water system. Yeah. Out by the reservoir. So I believe they that feed the reservoir. Yeah, well, that's a, yeah, they, there's usually a, a little concrete building that has chlorination and disinfection in it. Near any, 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 any drinking water source is required by law to be treated that way. And usually it's a building about the size of that table with about six feet high. And they put that stuff in there. Other questions? Don? Yeah, well, the, the 
one of the politicians at the table. Uh, <laughs> we want to do everything that we can to um, avoid anything close to what happened at Plains Road. And we actually had people from Plains Road who were uh, negatively affected come and advise the Environment Policy Board um, about what they recommended to make sure that history didn't repeat itself. And I don't know how familiar you are with you. Okay. So as part of the process to find another source of water when New York City shuts down the aqueduct for repairs, there were a bunch of different possibilities looked at. And what they settled on was taking a look at drilling wells in Plains Road. Um, they, did the, they did a series of test, testing, and surprises happened. And a number of people in the neighborhood are even far away. Their wells were affected. Some dried up for a couple days. And some sort of some just from the testing. Just yeah, from and and some people state that their the quality of their water was degraded and never came back to what it had been. People had sulfur in their water, and a lot of you know a lot of things happened. Um, so I think the emphasis is on, is on how early can we communicate with people who might be affected, and how thoroughly can we? And it's a it's it's not like it's the right thing to do because politicians want to get reelected. We don't want to screw up the same way that the perception is. You know, there were there were problems the last time. Um, so I know this. Uh, I only have five copies. Well, pass these around. This this board and the and the village board had come up with um, essentially some suggestions and recommendations. I want to make sure Floyd gets one. Yeah. Um, on on early access, and uh, one of the things that was to do baseline testing before there were any test wells drilled, so you knew what the before picture was. And I guess, guess the question is, if doing those tests is envisioned as, as step two, um, and if someone comes back and says, well, my water was better before, mm -hmm. where do we have the data to, to um, respond to that concern and say, well, no, your water wasn't better, or, or it was. So, um, Working with you, you know, what is the um, what is the most practical way to achieve that and to get baseline testing for any wells which might be affected as early in the process as possible? Uh, so, <clears throat> to answer that, uh, for Plains Road, they were basically drilling in sand, and Plains Road is basically basically like a bowl of water. So the water communicated very easily. Uh, this is all bedrock, so it's a completely different type of situation. Um, it's no different than drilling a well for a house. It's the exact same well. Um, I have two wells already right next, you know. I have two wells on either side of where I want to drill. Uh, I don't think, and, I'm, and I can verify this, but drilling in rock is a, a whole different beast uh, than what they did out on the plane drill, because it's basically, when you're drilling in sand, it's, it's almost like an underground river kind of there. But there, I think it was a pond. So on Plains Road, some people just tap into the sand, and some people drill and go into the bedrock. And I think it's the people that were in the sand that were directly affected mm -hmm. uh, by that. And I, I can confirm all that, but uh, my understanding, drilling rock is a whole, whole different type of scenario. But lay people in New Paltz or people who are neighbors to this property who may have concerns which are reasonable or just concerns. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't tell people their emotions are not valid. Um, so, uh, I guess... I, I, and I, you're saying their wells were affected when they tested or when they drilled? Test drilled. Yeah, the, the initial testing. Yeah, so um, I, I'll look into that. I, but Again, they were drilling in sand, and I don't, you know, that's different as far about, as I know. Could but I offer maybe a sort of middle compromise that I think we sort of talked about at Village Board, but I don't know how far we got, but um, is there a scenario where we figure out the sphere of influence, and I've had that explained to me by hydrologists so many times, um, but I can't <laughs> explain it, I just know all these different things factor in, including sand versus bedrock and proximity. It's not just a simple radius, it's typography. But if we figure out the sphere of influence 
and we just get a flyer and knock on everybody's door in the sphere of influence and we say heads up you know we're doing this um, if you want to do baseline data if you have your well logs cool if this proceeds further we'll be back just to give people a heads up not to take the um, on the task of collecting the baseline data but at least communicating and saying to people that the testing is going to happen and we just wanted them in the know and um, perhaps they already have the data or don't. It's a middle ground is what I'm getting at. Does that sound reasonable? Well, I had a couple more questions okay. before we got to them. Uh, my, back, my biggest question was, you know, whose project is this at this point? Um, and that goes back to who's paying for it. Uh, you know, the test well that you're doing, like you said, you've done test wells on your property for, uh, for your project. Uh, and perhaps if everything goes well, your intention or your desire is that it become a municipal type well. Uh, but right now, as I understand it, this is all your money, your property, your initiative, your risk uh, for at least the first holes uh, or the first drilling. Uh, you know, if this advances to a point later on, at some point it may become part of the municipal infrastructure, or it may not. Uh, and in that process, if something goes wrong, you're lying. I mean, this is you know, your plane <coughs> road issue at this point until or, or if. Or it could be a joint, a joint or, or several liability. Well, it could be. No, if it's all on him at this point. Well, no, no, but I know. <laughs> That's what I'm getting to. Right. Stage. That's what I'm getting yeah. to. As long as we've got a, as long as there is a relationship that strictly delineates who's responsible for what, I think we as a board are limited as to what we can recommend if it's all in your basket. Uh, if it's a shared basket, then yeah, I think we do have joint several issues. We've got... Uh, okay, you know, can I ask a yeah. kind of maybe stupid question? Uh, because again, I'm no pretty new. Though. No, those are good no questions. Why do you want this to be a municipal well? Do you get paid for this? If it becomes a, like what like what is your incentive to then make this possibly into a municipal well? Uh, well, a couple things. Uh, with the Millbrook Preserve, I always envision part of this property becoming part of the Millbrook Preserve or being connected to it. Uh, I thought having the wells would also be a good combination to that. And then either I sell the property to the village with the wells on it, or it could be I sell the water. I, I don't know. But ultimately, there would be a water source. Uh, I'm in my house, not on the village water system. I grew up here. I grew up with village water. I know the village needs water. Uh, lived here all my life. I can help with that. Ultimately, I guess I would potentially either sell the property or, or do something to the village. Because like that's, my, that's my end game, I guess. Right, uh, okay. That's what I mean. And it's saying. always been my, uh, and I know maybe people look at it differently, but having the well is a sort of innocuous thing on a preserve, but there is potential, if it's overdone, that it could have an environmental impact, certainly on the preserve itself. So I think that's why we wanted to, you know, get advice from this board, even though it is my property, it's my project at this point, you know, some point may not be if that if it gets to the point where it looks like it's a good source and the village wants to, to utilize it. Um, so to answer that, um, thank you. So along those lines with the well that is has already been drilled that is right next to the preserve, um, how do you respond to the concern that I've heard that you're putting a straw into the same water that feeds the preserve. And, you know, potentially are you not utilizing water that might be, in the long term, better used for natural purposes or used for Trip 13 or use people's wells downstream? Yes, yeah, since you're, the, I, I think the same aquifer would feed the preserve and that well. Um, should people have any concerns, and I don't know if you're the person to answer this, that, that there might be some unforeseen consequences uh, off, off of your property in, in the preserve? That's a good question. Yeah, I, yeah. And I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, my only understanding is you know, 
there is a connection between groundwater and water that lays on the ground uh, and you know, the rain and how it all connects up. Uh, I don't know what's under the ground, where the water's coming from, if it's flowing from here and going there underground. I just know I have a lot of water, so I don't think it's just the water seeping in from above. I think it's water coming from somewhere else. I, mean, I have a six inch diameter well and I'm getting over 100 gallons a minute, so I think there's something else down there. And I think ultimately, if you're pulling water from anywhere, it's going to have an effect of some, some extent. And, and I guess one has to rely on the scientists to determine that, what's a safe effect, and how do you balance between the human needs and the environmental needs. So I think that certainly is all going to have to be hashed out at some point. But for right now, what I think I'm doing is, is just test wells. I'm not using the water. Uh, granted, the one well I did drill, the water is coming out of the top, probably a few gallons a minute is coming out of it. So, uh, you know, this phase of it, I don't think there's an effect. I, I, I see your concern, I see the, the image of drilling the wells affected other people in the community. Why could it not affect people here? And what should we do to check it? And I will say, I'm probably the closest person to this well site, you know, my house. So, there's something I want to disrupt my water quality. My well, but um, I, I like what KT is saying. Figure out what is the appropriate sphere of influence, and maybe, <coughs> maybe start with that. Well, I've, you know, I've heard some concerns from individuals who live on the very end of Mill Rock Road and have wells, which would be just sharp. Sure. Sure. And then a little further down, uh, there's uh, Millbrook Terrace. Uh, there's people who that's just just one one street down. More right. Down. Well, and there's certainly there's North Mannheim, which yeah. is right there. Uh, that, the water supply, I think, only goes to Ulster Road, so I think everyone north of Ulster Road has wells as well. So. so this is a private project. I guess the question is, is this all on, on Floyd? No, legally it's all on Floyd, but is, is there some overriding interest in the part of the village to see that some of this baseline testing is done, whether it's done by him or whether it's done by some third party? You know, is that, is that important? And I'm not, I'm not. I'm just asking the question. I'm not saying it is important or it should be done. I'm just yeah, I mean, throwing it out there. Well, ultimately, the village or the town are going to be the end recipient of this. It's not going to be, you know, my water source. You know, it's going to be the village. village didn't need yeah, I mean, it's going to be a village or town or whoever wants to utilize it for the citizens of our area. I mean, it's so. I think starting from the beginning, I guess it would make sense for everyone to be comfortable. But you know, to an extent. And I think asking someone or getting uh, recommendations from hydrologists or someone to find out what what the effects could potentially be just from drilling um, is something I can do. And then I can report back to you guys. Yeah, I'm kind of doing the talking about I don't have any votes here, so yeah, it's, it's on them. Well, I think uh, I think Don's you know brings up a good point, and that's the unique nature of this perhaps collaboration. Uh, at the same time, it may not pan out to anything. Um, I think I appreciate Floyd KT coming here to kind of speak tonight to give us a uh, heads up on what's happening. Um, in my own opinion, I think it all really depends, or, or let's say gets more involved after this first, or after this well is drilled. I mean, it very well could Put that first well in, only get five, ten gallons per minute, and be done, and we never see him, you know, at this table in this context again. Um, right. If it does, though, and it does work into something where there's a you know, public-private partnership where uh, we, we work something out for the benefit of Millbrook and everything else, uh, then what we've done so far in coming tonight, us being advised, we're talking through it, has given us, uh, we'll say, more involvement than we would from a purely private project. I mean, if you were going yeah. to build a house in that same spot, you wouldn't need to come to us, you wouldn't need to speak to us, uh, uh, but because of the potential, you are. So I think that's a step in the right direction. Uh, my own standpoint, though, I won't become more interested until we hear back on how that first well, the first drilling of that, you know, the, Second well, in essence, uh, you know, goes. Um, until then, I, I see it as 
your project, your risk, your uh, pride. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And just I think in, in public interest, maybe just notify. You don't have to take baseline, but at least have the outreach and ability to. I mean, it's not that expensive, you know, to print 100, 100 sheets out, drop it off at each door, and you, in the sphere of influence identified by, you know, the, as a, uh, either the village hydrologist or the, uh, a private one. I mean, just as a uh, base designation, um, I mean, it doesn't really even have to be done by that, but preferably, you know. But, uh, I mean, I understand it's within your full right to, you know, do these activities, so we don't want to infringe on that. But uh, we fully, you know, really appreciate you coming to us and asking for our opinions and our, you know, recommendations. And I think we're all understanding of each other's uh, perspectives. So I think I'll second what Ted said, though. Any other comments from the board? Well, I think that it's uh, always good to exercise caution. And, um, you know, once you've bulldozed, it's basically too late once you've made that decision to you know, the bulldoze. So I think before you do that, the more you can do to make sure that that's really what you need to do, the better. And I mean, if it's your your liability, you, you don't want to get sued by people who are going to claim that their water is affected by your, your drilling. You don't want that to happen. I think it's really important for us to get that data. I mean, not just because of this well, but also because it wouldn't be that hard to do, um, and, and it would be it would give us an idea. Like we could actually map if we got the well on down, we could actually map the aquifer. We could actually find out like how big is it, how deep is it, if we could get the data from everybody around. I have the I have a map, and I have I have like the parcel data from um, at least ten years ago, but I don't think, I don't know if it's changed that much. But um, you can sort of see, like if you look at the topographical map, you can see what, where the sort of whole depression is, and what areas are wet, and where the wetland is. And I don't know if it doesn't necessarily mean that it actually exactly corresponds to where the underground water is. But you know, I feel like I think it's really important to get the data, and I, I wish we could. I would. I would love it if there's some way you could get an intern or somebody to, to work on it but to get it. Yeah, I just, what I'm hearing though, I think that's great as a bigger project, irrespective of what happens with the test well, but my understanding from talking to hydrologists is that the test well in this situation is not going to have significant impacts in the sphere of influence, but when you start doing it at much longer periods of time, this is just, a, this is just like stick, figuring out if there's anything there, to have right. widespread impacts you need like sand that we had on Plains Road, but I think Floyd already said that he would but talk to hydrologists yeah. to confirm right. I mean, I certainly that what won't I'm do saying any. is true. Yeah. And I don't think the village was going to actually collect the data or have the data, but the idea was to tell people this is going to happen, so if you want to do your own testing and get your baseline, that the, the property owners would have the data. It wouldn't be given to us or, or done by a village employee. This would be just to let people know, hey, something's coming. If you want to cover your butt, cover your butt. I think that's what I, my, my understanding. Well, I, I think, yeah, I agree. you know, for, for clarification, I think some of those questions are appropriate if there is a successful first test well. Right. You know, what to do next, I think. I think it's a very involved, uh, you know, conversation, uh, discussion, uh, collaboration. It's still the desire that this you know, could be a municipal source of one day. Uh, but I think similar to what KT was saying, this first test is qualitative. Is there water there or not in a sufficient quantity, you know, orders of magnitude, to look at it further? If it is, I think at that point, then we have this conversation about hanging flyers or advising people or going from there. Uh, but uh, I think. From what's being described here this evening is that yes or no, is there water there yet worth looking at? Uh, that's the part that I'm not necessarily concerned or needing any kind of further involvement on our part, especially if there's a distinct, and that's what I understand is right now, a distinct separation between
between what Floyd is desiring and what the village may or may not do in the future. Yeah, this is kind of sticking a stick in the ground and seeing if it comes up when. Yeah. Um, yeah. The problems at Plains Road, I believe, was when they did the first 10 hour test. Right. Let's pump for 10 hours from this aquifer and see what happens. Right, right. And because there was no baseline data, that's why there, had, there was so much controversy afterwards because there was no before picture. Right. So the idea is at the earliest point possible to get the before picture to protect you and also to just well, go to the community. And that first qualitative test, this first Quick, or not, you know, it's not quick, but the drill uh, that will outline what the strategy is. So it'll confirm whether or not it's bedrock, or if there's a surprise sand lens in there, or something like that. Uh, you know, all that comes from that first test uh, as to how those are normally done. And since the first well has been is already in process, do you envision that going to that step anytime soon, like before winter? Uh, the second well? No, the, the first well, the, where you've already seen there's water there. When would there be actual further test I, test drilling of the type that we're talking about? So um, there's the actual just the drilling of the of the well, which is what I did there. There's been no tests on it. There's been no pumping of it or anything. Um, it's just been just from the well driller's uh, experience and doing his maybe threw his pump in there and just pumped for a minute to see if the well was able to keep up at a certain amount. Um, I would probably, my plan was to drill this well, not test it, but maybe test everything at the same time, or do, do it all in the same time frame, not necessarily at the same time. But, so I don't, I don't have any plans right now to test this well until after I see what happens here. So it's, it's after those, it's at that point where the yeah. testing would begin, that the interest of this, this board would, would kick yeah, in. Yeah, uh, that's what I think, and that's why I was, when you said that, I was surprised to hear that people had issues from when they actually just drilled the hole, you know, the hole. It, it, well, so I, I think, I think it's I more when, they, when they're pumping When, when they did the 10-hour test, that was when they did So I certainly, and I've been advised, that you certainly have to notify and do all that prior to that. Okay. So the first one is well less than 10 hours, just well, for clarity. The, the first, yeah, the first one is just drilling the well, and then him just knowing what's coming out of it or how much he can keep up as he's doing it. Uh -huh. uh, so it's just, and then there is just a uh, a quick, quick well test, like maybe an hour or something. Uh -huh. uh, and then there's the official 10-hour test that takes place when you should be notifying your mean prior to that and getting baseline. And uh, just anecdotally, I've heard that the water coming from the well that you drilled already uh, smells sulfury. Mm -hmm. um, would that have any implications on whether the water would be appropriate for? Uh, uh, for not use? that I'm aware of. Uh, this, uh, I have sulfur bacteria, which is common. Uh, it's not sulfur, but it's sulfur bacteria. Maybe they eat the sulfur, I don't know, but it has a very similar smell. Uh, but that's treated with uh, natural chlorine. Uh, as well as in this this house here, that well I think has uh, sulfur and that's treated with bleach or chlorine. So they're both treated with bleach or chlorine. So it's and Which I think we were talking about before. I don't know if that's the, if you use more bleach or chlorine because there's sulfur in it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know to what levels either. Uh, my well, when I drilled it, smelled a lot worse than this drill. Like, like you can get whiffs of it here. Uh, my well was like, Potent, and I and I don't put much in it to chlorinate. I what I do is um, I chlorinate it and then I uh, carbon filter it, so I don't get the chlorine taste like that you have here in the village. Um, I just we have four students sitting here, and I just wondered. I know you have to be here, but I'm hoping that you're getting something out of this, and I'm wondering if you have any questions. Like, do you understand all this? Because I'm probably as knowledgeable as you four are. You might be more than I am since you're taking classes in school. Do you have any questions? You're all clear with all this. Donna, have you heard of any issues related to sulfur or sulfur bacteria? Did no, I just, I didn't know if you knew something. I just, no, I just, just know people just who, who live in the area and just kind of smell the smell. Yeah, so so when, when, just a question, you know, because it it's affects me personally, when they put in um, Woodland Pond, 
I'm kind of down and over, mm -hmm. and now my water, I have terrible sulfur water, which I lived there for 20 years and never had any sulfur water, and it happened not immediately, but it took a while, and then my water's disgusting now. Um, so it can take, it was probably a year, you know, it took almost a year for it to change like that. But they didn't, they're not, they didn't do any drilling or wells there. That, that's Whatever all, they did, they changed. It must have just, yeah, I don't know. I'm just wondering if development or something like that could just change water. It depends, I guess, on your, I mean, do you know how deep your well is or if, you have a, if you're in bedrock or if you're... I don't know a person, my yeah, husband might, okay. but I don't. I just wondered, uh, you know, how that affects. I've never heard of. Uh, I've never heard of that one. That's what I'm wondering. Is that was that could that be the cause of a, a development? I mean, hypothetically, sure. but yeah, that's in the realm of possibility, but it depends on the specific circumstances. Yeah. So in this case, I mean, that could happen, but at the same oh, no, time, no, I'm not even saying yeah. anything about his development. I'm just curious as to because it brought up this whole issue of sulfur. It, it could be that maybe uh, the last few years the water level has dropped. Maybe the water quality has gotten worse because of that. There's less water entering your well and it may have more minerals. I don't think sulfur is necessarily bad for you. I think there are it just things that, yeah, just I, and I, I can't stand it either. It's just, yeah, it's, it makes the house smell. I'm just curious. Do you, do you treat it? No. Uh, yeah, because just a, a simple carbon filter works. For, for I have for drinking. Oh, I have a filter okay. for drinking, but. I don't but know. Uh, you can get a, a carbon filter. They're relatively inexpensive. That treats the whole house, and it backwashes every night. And if if it's just if it's just sulfur, and I'm sorry, I, I misspoke before. The house that has just sulfur, that's treated with a carbon filter only now. And there's a difference, as you said, between sulfur and sulfur bacteria. Uh, and that was me. Yeah. Those are two different yeah. issues. The sulfur bacteria, you have to use bleach to kill the bacteria. Uh, it's not harmful to you, but it kills the odor. And then I use a carbon filter to uh, get it out of the water and get the, get the bleach, residual bleach out of the water, too. Uh, if it's just sulfur, you could use just a carbon filter, which you said you do for drinking water. And anyway, you can get a whole house one. They're not terribly expensive. But regardless, if it's a municipal water system, they have to add bleach. Even if it's the best water in the world, they have to add bleach to it. Or chlorine, or whatever. It's just the nature of the beast. So all the water in New York City, and that's all chlorinated. Yeah. Anything yeah. that's yeah. a municipal water supply. And if you live with it, you don't notice it. But if you're visiting and you try you it, you can taste it. I smell it. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. the Mountain Rest, Mountain Rest Road, we treat the water that comes from New York City reservoirs there before it comes down to the village. Any other questions for Floyd? Do you have what you need from us? Yeah, so you know, if you'd like, I can either report back through email, then it can get distributed for you guys uh, just on access. And I can certainly reach out to you, Rachel, and walk in with you if you want. Absolutely. Uh, I guess I only, well, you, you read the, the, the guidelines at the village. I guess those guidelines were proposed for. I don't know if you read that, but yeah. Okay. No, I just wanted to wanted your opinion of oh, that. About whether Floyd thought that was reasonable or whether that was something you could see yourself follow. Is it something I'm allowed to see? I I didn't know if we got two things going on okay. here. I didn't know Sorry, if Rachel was talking about this or this. Yes. There are works in progress that are not project specific but outline considerations that the vi sure. the village wants to take. Um, when we do exactly what you're proposing to okay. do. So there's a lot of preamble here about why, and then there's um, a list of criteria, which should look familiar to you, and then we're also hashing out a more procedural outreach, nuts and bolts. So this is policy and this is procedure. I think it's the easiest way to differentiate. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm getting my hair is like Okay. Thank you. Right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Floyd. I appreciate you doing this and keeping an open dialogue. And on that note, I. Okay. And yeah. let me know when you're going to walk because I don't mind. Yeah, yeah Greg's is working right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I stay over there this time of year.
Yeah. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Okay. So. Next one. Uh, yeah. From the agenda, we were in the middle of uh, five uh, B's. Actually, we talked about uh, the other item in that category is the water treatment plant area. Um, I don't know if we had any kind of discussion or any uh, report back in regards to the water investigations at the water treatment plant. I don't, so. No, I have no idea. That's your job. Um, <laughs> well, the village has uh, located a couple of wells, uh, the water treatment plant, that look very promising. Uh, the, uh, the output, if I recall, and I don't recall correctly, I think it's 70 gallons per minute at one well and, and 40 at another, somewhere around 100, a little over 100, 120 uh, in total. So it looks very promising. It's land that we own. And it's obviously right near the, all the all the the water treatment system, so it's easy easy access. Um, uh, there is another potential project um, at a private property uh, up on Mount Rest Road, very close to uh, the water treatment plant, and um, that's still under discussion. Uh, I think I don't know if any is there any other discussion. There's certainly no action items at this point in either of those categories. Yeah. That'll bring us back to the item A, which is the proposed resolution for the village board regarding water sourcing. Yeah, so um, as we ended with Floyd, um, we've sort of been throwing the kitchen sink at all this lately and trying to um, deal with individual projects as they come along, as we've discussed, but also to have a macro guiding policy. Um, so um, we've had multiple conversations about this document as well as this, well, I don't know about multiple about on the second one, um, but as I said a couple minutes ago, I sort of conceptualized this as this is a policy, this is a resolution the board is going to pass, but then um, what I what I've heard back from Don is that you all want something more nuts and bolts like, okay, so how are you going to do what's in this resolution? So I guess my question for um, the board are, and I know you just got this, um, we do have it on our agenda for tomorrow night, um, but I don't think um, we're in a rush to pass it or anything. If you want to digest and give us feedback, um, you know, particular revisions or missing pieces to the puzzle. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, did we get all the things? So, so the front end, and I, does anybody need a copy? I did copy. I'll try to find it. The front end is basically the, the, the whereas is that say why we're doing this, which Don has referred to multiple times this is evening, which is that we get 60% of our water from New York City and we want to wean ourselves off of that for multiple reasons. Um, that we're also very actively looking to repair our 100-year-old infrastructure because we should, because the, t the, the pipes are tuberculated, which basically means filled up with gunk, and also um, leaks, right? I mean, anybody that lives in the village knows that we've <laughs> pretty regularly gotten texts, you know, there's a leak, don't go down this road. Um, we, we have 100-year-old infrastructure for this stuff, so... Um, those two main issues, that the pipes are just so um, tuberculated and also because they're so old they leak and that's like basically lost revenue for the village right there. We're, lo we're losing too much water. Um, so we're, we're trying to get what we can to invest in our infrastructure. Um, and at the same time, going back to um, finding local water sources, that's so we can wean ourselves off from New York City, which also has a fiscal impetus because the rate has been rising at about 11% a year and it's you know New York City straight up has said to us that you know don't expect this to go down it's going to continue to go up so that's why we're looking at properties with Floyd and looking at Mountain Rest Road so then if you get to the the items 1 through 10 this is what we've come up with so far well you know if we had so Theoretically, if we had 10 sites and threw, you know, darts at that map, like where would we go first? These are the considerations that we would go through. And these are, you know, the, um, so it has to do with cost, it has to do with proximity to water infrastructure, it has to do with yield, but then 
you'll see there's a lot about you know environmental concerns and making sure that we do this in an environmentally responsible way. So that's why um, we seek feedback from you on this. Did we cover all the environmental basis? Did we articulate it in a way that makes sense to you all? Um, and then um, the drilling SOP. So things like notification isn't in this. Maybe it could be in this. I don't know. I don't feel like it does. I feel like we need a separate document like yours that talks about um, what we do when we're actually doing it. So, do you want to add to that, Don? Or um, well, let's see. This is the other document. Just I think started with Ted. I'll just pass around it. That this this board did vote and approve that it's hoping that the village board would uh, incorporate into its procedures. Um, I guess the one one question I wanted to ask of the uh, of the EPB. There was a battle royal that went on for about a year and a half on um, the village board with regard to the issue of whether when the conser eas conservation easement was written for the Millbrook Preserve, um, would that easement allow for drilling for water or not? And it was a, it was a battle royal. Um, ultimately, the board uh, voted to uh, allow drilling in a very uh, small couple of areas with a lot of restrictions. Uh, but I wonder if this board might not have been involved or kind of had some input into that sort of discussion. And I, I think as I'm looking at number 10 here, you know, when, when we're looking at land that is under a conservation easement, in those sorts of situations, should the village board have a procedure that they consult with the EPB? Um, because one of the other properties that is being looked at right now is under easement. Uh, it's probably too far along where the EPB would, it would be a little late for the EPB to get involved at this point. But looking into the future, I guess, you know, is that something that we want to, that you want to be more involved in or not? I, you know, it's, that's the only question I had okay. in looking at. I, uh, I don't think it's too late. So I would, I would say if that does happen, I would seek um, well, input. The legislative intent for this, uh, this board is, uh, I'll just read B and C. B is to advocate for the rights of nature, and C is to advise the village board on such issues as it deems necessary. So it's just a question of. All right, well, go ahead and read A, though, because I think A is also the sure. first one listed, and, and equally is. Uh, the, well, the goal and primary objectives of the board shall be, continue to be A, is continuing efforts to identify and offer practical solutions to village officials for dealing with environmental problems, and then advocate for the rights of nature and advise the village board on such issues as it deems necessary. And uh, since you're a newbie, here's, here's uh, part of the law that, uh, that created us. I can send you a link in the village code to the whole thing. Okay, thank you. Um. So when, like you're asking us to look at this, you said you're not going to vote on it tomorrow, but um, would we have time like at our next meeting to go over this before you voted on it or you want to do that well soon? you guys can do via email so if you want to send us feedback um that's what i'm I saying when do you want it by um when do you envision this being voted on it's kind of hard to able to see how it goes at the table tomorrow i don't know how far away the board but i i don't i mean what do you I feel like it's one of these again, you know. We, we have should. a two meeting rule and we've already discussed it once, which means we could, under our procedures, approve it tomorrow. But I think if the board, if this board, is looking to have some time to tell that board, our board, you know, how they feel, you know. We'll communicate that back and that's fine. Have that conversation. I think from my own perspective, uh, you know, I look for our uh, tasks uh, to come from your board. We we uh, uh, we were asked as a board to uh, you know, put this together. Our recommendations as to uh, for you know, seeking water sources. So I think if, if you guys are saying, please look at this and comment back to us. Uh, that's what we'll do. Basically. Uh, All right. Uh, if it's uh, if 
it needs to be timely, you, you give us a deadline, let us know what, uh, what you're seeking, and we'll go through it. I'll tell you, I've already read through this part. Um, I had a couple of questions, a couple of clarifications, um, but you know, I've done that part as an initial uh, you know, request. We got today, um, or, or yesterday, or whatever. Uh, but again, my biggest point is, I, I think I looked to the, to the uh, tasks or the, you know, the questions to come from you guys, because as you were reading, that it's at the end of the uh, part C, I see that as the village board. You know, it's, go ahead and read that last part again. That'd be good to advise the village board on such issues that it, it seems necessary. Yeah, so it's is the village. Yeah, I'm reading the it is as this board. <laughs> right, right. So I, and that's, and that's, and that's and we but I, I mean, I've, um, so, yeah, we're I collaborative folks, you right. know. I'm, I'm on, it can go in both directions as far as I'm concerned. Well, one of the board members at the time who helped create the Environmental Policy Commission at that time said the intent was to force us, the village board, to do our job, quote unquote. So okay. at least that one trustee, just that's just one, yeah, one person at that time said the focus of this, this board is to raise issues that the village board might not be seeing and, and get in their face if, you know, if that's called for. Does that seem? Yeah, nice? I mean, I, again, I just feel like if it can go in either direction. You know, we're all in this together. Sure. If there's stuff that needs attention paid to, the, the locus of where it comes from is not a huge concern for me. Um, this, though, did, did we? We didn't pass this, though, right? Um, because my recollection well, This was, board passed it. Okay, yeah, exactly. so I just wanted to make sure because my... Okay, so this was the feedback that I got about using anything seeker related outside of an actual legal seeker yeah. planning board process was that um, we don't want to do that because yeah. that sets us up for litigation because if we say we're going to do quasi seeker that's just setting us up for all sorts of um, improper I'm having trouble here but I, I feel like you're getting me a little bit no, I understand. Um, yeah, you can't you can't do quasi seeker. You're either doing seeker for a project uh -huh. or not. So. And I um, understood the, the question differently. Uh, that uh, you you all were asking us for advice on how they how the village should proceed if it were to seek its own water source using its own funds as yeah. its own project. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we. Yeah, came together and, and I, I, I'm the one that was like, oh, let's just use the EA app. Like, I, it was my idea, but then when I explored it, I was like, wait, yeah, no, this is my idea too. Okay. Yeah. I, I just forgot about that aspect yeah. of it. But yeah. it, I mean, it makes sense. Like, if you're in the lead agency, there's no, there's no lead agency in that, you know, it's a private, <laughs> private scenario in this case. But uh, yeah, I think it's appropriate what you came up with. And I, I mean, I, I think number 10 is, is it my favorite, one of the better parts of it in terms of uh, the mentions of the conservation easements and Red Mill Road Preserve has one. And I mean, uh, I, I did find the sphere of influence or maybe more specific language uh, instead of just using parameters because that's a little bit vague. And, I mean, I mean uh, and also the yield. I mean, you guys need a certain threshold to guarantee you know, a village supply of municipal water that yeah, so basically it, it, we're trying to cobble together to get to the five yeah. six hundred. Yeah, so I mean, maybe you specify a range of, you know, above 50 to proceed, you know, with these jobs, so you like, at least have a minimum threshold beyond the initial boring, because then you can exclude a lot of, you know, pieces or, you know, properties that are undevelopable, no matter how many drills you test, you're not going to get a higher, you know, number than five, ten, whatever that it's not worth going that next step and having to undertake some of these steps that standing oper operating procedure is outlining. Right, okay, so you just threw a lot at me. I'm gonna work backwards, okay? Fine with um, this. <laughs> so number two, um, yeah, I guess like what I said before was like, you know, in concept, you know, in theory, you threw, you know, you have 10 sites and you just pick the highest one, but I'm hearing you say that um, you should say there should be a minimum yeah, if the initial, you know, boring... Like, have at least 
blah, blah, Because blah. otherwise, no matter how many drill balls you add up, you're not going to get the number you need to wean off the DEP system. I mean, it's just simple math. Yeah, and I know there's probably a number, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head that makes it viable. I think the mayor, the mayor has I yeah. said if we can find 30, several 30 gallon per minute wells on a property. So I think the, I think they're looking for no less than 30 per well. Yeah. My but again, these are all in context and not yeah, necessarily yeah. in order. You know, so those three wells, if they're like right up against our water mains, they're not the same as three wells that are, you know, two miles from no, our yeah, water no, So of it's, all it's all sort of, it's all I mean, I kind of played with the idea of ranking and then I threw that idea oh, no, no, because I'm not saying it got too I'm fancy. Just, I'm just saying like, complicated. at least have a minimum yield to consider if you have to undertake these procedures. Otherwise, you might as well drop it. Okay. Any idea. I, I'll I don't ask know, the mayor it, what he recommends on that. I mean, I just feel like it would wean some people off who are trying to, you okay. know, push the limits of what they can develop in terms of getting 30 wells and get 10 uh, or, you know, 10 or 20 uh, gallons per minute as opposed to a property owner who finds 50 gallons per minute. Right. I hear you. Yeah. And then just, you know, limit the pool of people eligible and, or properties eligible for, you know, or not eligible, but filtered under the criteria um, of, you know, the high yield and what we need to meet the needs of uh, getting on the DEP system. But other than that, I mean, I think it's a great job overall. Uh, this, I mean, I'm not disputing any, I'm not saying you should change anything. I mean, these are just, you know, recommendations Okay, but let further. me just ask a couple questions. Yeah. So you said, on number 10 within parameters. It says within parameters specified as an yeah. easement, so it's kind of okay, I depends mean, I on the particular easement. easement. Okay. But I can tell you, I don't want to misspeak, but yeah. I'm almost positive that I lifted number nine right from the Millbrook Preserve easement. So those are the types of things that, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of redundancy there built in um, because I, I took that from an, an okay, easement that I know fine. exists. I think I did. I don't want to swear. I'm like 95% sure. Like and then the last one is like just supposed to be a catch all for any property with a okay, CE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we're, vagueness, well, now. we're legally, I mean, a conservation easement is a legal document. So we're just, re, we're just saying we're going to follow the law, basically. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then there was one other thing you said, though. Do you remember? The yield. Okay, yeah, no, there, there, there was a third thing. That's um, okay. Yeah, sorry, but overall, great document, like 9.5 out of 10. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, really, I think it, I mean, it covers all our concerns that we like, brought up at other meetings internally, uh, past few meetings, like the August 9th one. And I mean, notwithstanding the seeker uh, inapplicability, uh, I mean, this meets all our concerns in terms of. I mean, at least from my understanding that we're brought up, so, I mean, it's, I'd be obliged to, you know, recommend that you guys, you know, pass it, but I don't know if we're ready at this point. We still have to provide more feedback, right? Well, probably not this evening, I would imagine. Okay. Well, it, it's well, yeah, if you want to... you guys asking us to... We'll endorse it. We'll endorse it. That's fine. I mean, I, I, I'm totally comfortable with just saying to the board that we're waiting to hear from you all and we can do it, you know. I don't know how often you meet. That's why I hesitated well, this morning. Okay. So the question is, do we want to get in touch with the village board with any input? The next meeting after tomorrow is two weeks from tomorrow, or do we want to wait until a month for the next? That's what my DVD? question was. That's, well, that's, that's the question. Yeah. You know. Well, where I'm asking the board. Personally, I'd love to do it sooner, and if we could, okay. you, I mean, you guys can do stuff by email if you're comfortable with that. I'd rather not wait for another month. Right, so, but, can us um, get, so before, so you're meeting tomorrow, so how about if we say we'll get you everything before two weeks, you know, so your next meeting, so we'll have it back to you before then. By a week that? from Friday, because the board gets all this okay. information the Friday before its Wednesday meeting, so that would mean, so that would give us nine days. Does that sound good? Us, that would give you nine days. It would be the uh, sixth, uh, seventh. Right. seventh? Yes, that's right. Okay. All right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So okay. we're committing to uh, you guys that we will get you comments and or a approved format by a week from Friday. Yeah. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah. And some information, just some real information to put this as you think about it. Uh, on tomorrow's agenda for the village board is initial discussion of talking about, you know, we're not going to do it, just talking about it for the first time 
possibility of looking for water in Hasbrook Park and at the Borealo Pool property. So just to make this real for people. So, so there's some stuff that overlaps with what you had here? Well, I think at this point I'm just comfortable with this part. I, okay, I but mean, right no, now we've got okay. two of these that and that that I think we internally have to kind of look through. Okay. This one, I'm less confident that we can come back with something. Well, but the, that document doesn't do anything in terms of specifying the steps to take in terms of communication. And there were just there were requests yeah, for second opinions. I think that's the biggest piece is the communication. Well, there were also second, second opinions on public private yeah. projects. So there, there is stuff in the in the document that had come from this board to the village board initially that, that I think KT was saying this is policy and that's procedure. I think right. I think it'd be good to have the procedure too. Oh, I agree. Too. I agree. I'm just saying, uh, you know, from uh, from a commitment standpoint, I think we can make the commitment as a group. We're all nodding our heads so we can provide yeah. feedback on. Well, this. the other documents we've already passed. This one, right? And the other Not one as well. That. No, the they, drilling also something we just saw. No, the I guess it was before you were here. Okay. The EPB right. did pass that and pass it on to the village. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. I'm yeah. 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 Which. Yeah. <laughs> now, I now I don't feel so bad because I was like, I wait, what? That. I that. I that's that. the park seems ideal to me because it's not going to affect anybody's well. It's right near the municipal buildings. DPW wouldn't have to go very far. Like, it's right there where you can see it, you can watch it. There's roads It actually all could be it. underground. You just see There's the no, little well head. Like, it just seems like it you sort of watch out get for it. And not just that, but we know there's an artesian well right there because they used to use it for the campus. It's right there, like there, where the uh, near Vandenberg Learning Center, yeah. or whatever they're calling that building now. We know that there's a well there um, that they they capped it off. So we already know that's that seems to me like the most well, that's the, the best man. place to the best place that's to where you run a lock. I yeah. mean. Well, that, who? Let's, if, if we could, let's stick to these. Um, okay, so, Don, Don, you're saying this was approved by the EPB before yeah, for the, our yeah, it was. We had two people who had who lived on Plains Road okay. who came and advised the board on, on the experiences that they'd had. And that document was written by the EPB. Okay. As a result, I don't know, maybe it was a time, like you were here now and before you were here, Ted. Okay. But we, we talked about that a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, it was since I was on the board, so, okay. which is June 1 ish. Um, but we, yeah, the village board has definitely seen it, prompted lots of conversations, prompted well, in part the previous me. previous board this. had had the first conversation about that, that drilling SOP before you were there, and then when you were there, it was yeah, the I second, don't know when Ted second came. discussion. So it was a while ago. But it was, it was approved by this board. Uh, it was just a question of whether we want to okay. stay okay. behind it. All right, well, I apologize for that. Yeah. It was, Okay, so back then to the three documents. Uh, I think as a, as a, and I'm saying this out loud for, for our benefit, for as a planning or as an environmental policy board, we're committing to get feedback on this policy, proposed policy document by a week from prior. Yeah, I already put it in my calendar. Okay, all right. And, and these two have already been approved, they're, so they're already documents that, that are, that are yeah. part of the uh, process. Okay. All right, and Rachel, I'm sorry. I to catch up on the. Although, I don't know if everybody heard, we did get feedback from attorneys that you we can't say we're doing a seeker element yeah. when we're not doing an actual seeker project. We had the same issue with the other document, and that's yeah. where the, the word seekers were changed to environmental review. Right. So just, yeah, just cross out a seeker, right. put it in environmental process, or right. environmental review. Although, that again gets you back to the abstract. So this gets you a little more concrete. Um, so I'm not sure. This task was before me. I would take this, these two, and see where there's overlap and what makes what you would want to weave into this from this, and what this would then just be left as procedure, and this would be left as policy. But that would probably, be, for, probably be the village board to figure out. Yeah. Well, we seek. Wait, what does it say? Do we get to tell them what to do? <laughs> No, well, the, we can do it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think this board has already advised right. on some of that stuff, and is going to advise on the rest of it. So we'll have all the advice. Okay, and cool. Figure out what to do with it. It's all good stuff. I would also. I don't want to.
discuss it now, but I feel like there's a lot of learning that needs to go in the community about the synergy between um, using protected land to source water. That there actually is a mutually beneficial, beneficial um, benefits from doing those things in the same place. And it's really the future of the state is throwing at money at communities, um, not throwing, um, but has dedicated a significant amount for people, uh, municipalities, to buy land that are in the watershed of their municipal um, water supply. Um, in recent memory, we have Newburgh as an example, that's surface water. We don't, we have the reservoirs, we're not looking for surface water, but but this idea that I would love to talk more about the Environmental Policy Board and environmentalists in general, because I, it, there seems to be a learning curve in this idea that it can be a synergistic, really beneficial relationship. And that actually when you source water on protected land, it ups the ante for making sure that that land stays pristine because you're getting your water there. So, you know, DOH comes into play, all these other regulators come into play. Um, but as when we were talking about with Floyd, it's a delicate balance, right? You have to look at the recharge rates, you have to monitor your habitat, you know, you have to make sure that you do this right. Um, but I think that we can do it right. Um, and it is environmentally currently the perspective. So I'd love to chat about that more. Yeah, we can kick you out because you have more to do. do. <laughs> yeah, the counterpoint to that is pristine land is pristine land and you shouldn't be clear-cutting trees and bringing heavy equipment in. So there are, you know, that's, it's, a, it's one of those arguments where there's no wrongs and no rights. You just need to make value judgments. But thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks. And for volunteering. Okay. We are on uh, yeah. item 5, Roman numeral 5C, which is the paint swap implementation. Uh, it is Gregson's project. I'm not aware that he had any updates other than it appears to be working. Any other comments or yeah, discussion good. on uh, paint swap? Yeah, good. Okay. Next. Okay. Sanitary sewer capacity report is something I'm working on. Uh, oh, that is that? Uh, sanitary sewer capacity, oh, sanitary sewer capacity right. report, uh, item D. Uh, I am uh, working through the data to update a report from a couple of years ago that uh, identified how much capacity is left within the existing uh, village wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and uh, that information then uh, would hopefully allow uh, the community uh, to then make decisions based on that. Uh, and you have heard or will be hearing from a member of the planning board who uh, I ran into at a, uh, at a restaurant. We were talking about, about that and I think we'd like to be, um, like to work with you to some extent possible to kind of Make sure the planning board is, is aware of you know as, as the progress is going in. sure and i certainly have a real interest in that okay um but thank you for your work on that yeah let's see where uh, it's going it's a, uh next item is uh and i can't pronounce it so I think you can uh, you've done it pretty well the uh, uh pit parcel oh i need to look at it and i'll pronounce it oh, we've got extra i'm sorry we've got extra agendas La Estancia. Okay. La Estancia X. Yes. Where did they get the kid at these sites? La Estancia at the Ridge here. All right, so we talked about this last time. Uh, Gregson and I had uh, volunteered to uh, get in front of uh, this issue by meeting with the uh, uh, developers uh, and let them know of our uh, potential concerns uh, and things that we're interested in. Uh, so we had done that back on September 13th. Um, Greg's and I were both scheduled to be there uh, at the last moment. Gregson got uh, pulled away from uh, work. There should be two copies there. Or, you know, uh, so it was meant as an introductory meeting, and it was just that uh, uh, there were representatives from the uh, project, and we went over some of our initial uh, concerns uh, that we'd like to be interested in uh, there. Early in the process, uh, they know we're out there, uh, so I anticipate that they'll reach out to Gregson and I as they move forward. Do uh, they? Our, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Our, our goal is to uh, uh, you know, work uh, on behalf of the Environmental Policy Board on those concerns, uh, but be able to dedicate the time and the resources to meet with them and discuss and you know, go through that. Okay. 
Are they still having, meeting, are they still doing demonstrations because they were, they had several. I think they had several, but I don't know what their current schedule is. I'd love to know. We did talk about possibly having, you know, if they spoke to us, I certainly haven't, wasn't there, so I would right. love it. I'm just, you know, to me, like the bottom line is, are they going to helicopter people into the, the pit area? Like, how do they plan for people to ever come down Main Street to, to get to there with the trap? Like, to me, I, I don't know where we could put more cars. I'm, I'm just, I guess for me, it's what's happening is my road, which is right um, next to Horse and Den, Horse, well, Horse and Den and North Putt, everyone's going around like this. And, you know, I've got trucks barreling down our road the way we never did before. There's so much because nobody wants to deal with the traffic going through town. It's so bad. And again, I used to be able to walk out on my road and I can't anymore. Um, I'm just curious at how to anyone, before you even look at anything here, how could they even think that they're gonna get more people in this village when there's, they're, like I'm not talking about their parking, I'm talking about driving. Where could we put more roads to bring all these people, the hundreds of more people that they plan to put in, in this La Estancia, you know? So that's just my comment before I even looked at any of these other environmental issues. I don't know how we could get them in, so. Do, uh, are they aware of, and, or, or uh, was the pre-existing conditions that NOAA had presented to the planning board at all um, a part of uh, this discussion? Uh, um, no. Could you make sure that all the people on the board get that? Oh, okay. I mean, I've, I've said that to Ted before. He's seen it, but I guess it just wasn't brought up. Just because I, I think if when when it gets in front of the planning board, hopefully, yeah. since you gave that information to the planning board, hopefully they'll be asking questions along those lines. So it's probably good to give the developer a All heads right. up. These might be some concerns that you'll be, <coughs> you'll be doing. So will they, can we get them to speak to us? And then would we make comments that go then to the planning board? Like, how does it go? Um, well, we advise the planning board in terms of make sure you take care of this, that, and the other thing. Make sure you ask these questions. It's just advice. And they don't have to ask the questions. Uh, well, they, they, you know, I think they probably would try to follow the advice unless they disagree. Um, I think it would be a question of explaining that to the developer and saying it's probably better for you to come and talk to this board you know, before this stuff gets in front of the planning board because... Right, I'd like to know how they would deal with all this excess traffic. So, um, you know, that's just out of the one issue without looking at all these other ones. And you're saying you... Someone discussed all these already? No one did? Well, uh, it, was, it was Gregson and I's purpose to just to, to meet with them initially. Uh, because they, at this point, they don't have anything in front of the planning. Uh, you know, they're still in pre-project concept development. Uh, but Gregson and I thought, uh, thought it was important to talk to them sooner than later uh, so that we could have some influence in discussions on those. Uh, now, in the discussions we had so far, we had not identified traffic uh, or parking, not necessarily as concerns. Certainly, that could be concerned. I would anticipate that we concerns in the community, but not within the realm of the environmental policy board. Yeah, uh, we don't look at traffic. That's a planning board thing. Yeah, it's a planning board. Well, thing. it's pollution, and it's like a, well, a, I don't see how that's not environmental. If we deem those issues to be necessary, right? Yes, no, I'll give it, it definitely is. I feel like I, when I looked at this project. Um, I think that they don't seem to have, we may maybe need to do is give them the perspective of, okay, of what it is they're taking away from the community. I mean, obviously they're focused on what they feel they're giving the community in terms of jobs and parking spaces or whatever. But I think they really need to take a hard look at what they're taking away from us, which is an incredible sound and pollution buffer between all the houses and the schools and the parks and the downtown. And I feel like the building should take that into, they should take that into account. I mean, I know they just said that they were going to put a green roof on uh, the theater, the which I guess is further down, there, but uh, I feel like just the, the project needs to incorporate more uh, green space and more uh, green 
uh, more greenness, you know, more vegetation itself, more so that it, it doesn't um, take so much away from the community in terms of its ability to buffer sound and pollution. The, the property right there, because that is a pre-existing condition, which I don't think we, I'm not sure how we yeah, just pull it, but, but that is a fact. And also there are, you know, I mean, I mean they're, they're considered to be pests, but whenever you eliminate habitat for a deer population, they go somewhere else. So where are they going to go? Everybody's yard. <laughs> the deer, because there are deer living in there, in the property. And my wife is still blaming the woodland pond for our loss of gorgon flowers. She just thinks all the deer came from there and went to our house. But uh, I'm sure that's not the case, but, but they go, yeah, they go somewhere. So is there a chance that they, how would, would you right. try and arrange them? To well, I think uh, that's what we can do uh, now. We can have them. Do people all agree that that would be good for us to have them come here? Is I, I think in the long run, yeah. I mean, maybe in the shorter term, maybe after we send them the pit parcel stuff. I mean, uh, Don, what's your new email? Uh, Don Poltsich at mail.com. Oh, that one, okay. ALO was getting too embarrassing. <laughs> well, the, uh, uh, after the meeting, we haven't followed up with them, either of our restaurant or I, since September 13th. And what Greg and I had talked about was after this meeting is that, you know, reach out to them and say, hey, this is what we were all thinking. Thanks for meeting with us. This is what we're all thinking. Uh, we can include the uh, you know, items that are under B here, drainage, habitat loss, and uh, plastic bags, but we can also Include the aspect of there are concerns from uh, other members uh, within the EPB about traffic and noise, uh, and I think deer is already within that habitat loss uh, yes. category. And there's some interest uh, in having uh, uh, them come in and give us a presentation, uh, as well as send them the information uh, from NOAA's. Uh, you know, parcel uh, documents. Document yeah, yeah, yes, right. and, and basically like a preliminary conditions assessment, right. with, which is basically what was there before, what are things that are potentially issues, and using like the uh, USDA uh, National Resource Con for the Conservation Service data to find out the bedrock depth, the type of bedrock that is in the general area, so that they know if they have to blast or excavate or figure out you know the next steps in the development of that project. And just to give them a heads up and a planning board a heads up that you know these are items A, B, and C. That's what I'm saying to be concerned about and to put into the grand scheme of things and consider when looking to approve or grant a variance, whatever it may be, to proceed with the project or not. So I'm forwarding that along. And uh, there's documents within this Word document that you can click each PDF on each page, which is another 15 pages of data about like, the bedrock and the implications of it in general and it's not really able to be used at the spatial scale as, as, as knitted right now because of the software limitations but it's at least informative enough to provide insight to a potential developer someone a google doc this is on your own yeah well yeah, i am sharing you it right share, now you're sharing it to us now yeah okay. all right thank you all right so we send on the PIT information that NOAA's put together. Uh, we indicate that we're interested in a presentation uh, you know, to us. Uh, and we would add traffic uh, uh, to the items that we've already, that Gregson and I have already identified as uh, initially appearing to be concerns for the product. Sound all right? Mm -hmm. okay. Good. And this, I mean, this information for the pit parcel is also a resource input from our site visit where we went around and she voiced her concerns too, so it's a compilation of what we were working on. Yeah. Next time is the uh, Water Street Market Theater. That's not one I'm following. No, I mean, I, I'm, I just had it as an item because, I mean, it's a growth thing. I mean, they're removing trees, but I mean, it's not in the great scheme of things. Um, at this point, there's like no, no real involvement uh, between us or any municipal body on it. It was just an item to keep an eye on. Um, there's no residency. There's nothing proposed like that on the project, so it wouldn't have to increase capacity much or have any other environmental implications beyond just changing an existing parking lot essentially into a building. 
um, albeit with some I mean, historical and neighborhood concerns, but that's beyond our scope. So for all of those purposes, we can move on to the green infrastructure. Don, do you have any? Susan, we could have uh, had used the criteria that if something is undergoing a secret process, we would comment on it. And that's how we d decide what things in front of the planning board we talk about and what we wouldn't. If it had a secret environmental review process, that kicked us in. Okay, and did the theater? I don't think it would, but I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. And, uh, You're building it on a parking lot. It's already there. So then we'll be taking away parking. Then they say they're going to put a green roof. roof. What they say? They sold it on the green roof. What? Nothing. I was just saying they sold it on the green roof. I mean, well, I think that was an add-on. I know, but uh, for, all, for, all, yeah, for all intents and purposes, it's beyond our scope, so. Okay. Yeah. What's next? Next time is the Green Infrastructure Steering Committee. Uh, Dave Gilmore, I've been in communication with him. They have, there is an RFP ready to go out uh, here shortly. It's dated uh, in the next day or so to go out, but I've not heard if he's still on schedule or not. But I anticipate that, that. It's well written. It's a great grant opportunity. Or, uh, not bringing up a proposal, and uh, I think you covered all the items. That, I mean, you had some input, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, on behalf of the EPP, I think the any input you have would make the most sense. Next time, open space inventory? No? Uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, the last meeting that's kind of been put off to the side. Um, I'm trying to figure out a new project to get involved with, but I just don't have the skills nor the uh, infrastructure to do the open space inventory. And I believe the village may, or the planning board may be looking into their own, you know, brilliant opportunity with GIS planning. Um, but uh, yeah, it's beyond my abilities and time and other constraints that have, you know, eaten up all my time and my time. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. What would it What would it take to put a bow on that and and make it? Done. I, do, I just think the, the village really just needs to, I mean, I just think this, I don't really have the capacity to work on the shape files using Google, uh, or no, not the free source software, because it just operates a bit differently, I mean, and I'm not familiar with it. But, but do we do we need to have those elements in order to have it completed? Well, in the way I, I intend it, but I guess, I mean, I guess we can amend it to include new, you know, uh, parcels that I've identified on the parcel list, but... Yeah, it's basically just need the capacity and the ability, you know, I don't have the software, I don't want to pay, you know, 1500 bucks for a license, whatever it is. Right. Uh, but I mean, the, we have an inventory, we have a list of properties, and yeah. criteria and stuff like that, we just don't have it indexed to... I guess, so, yeah, I guess I can do that, but I, I just, I, I intended it to be a lot more comprehensive than that, and so okay. kind of... And I've been unable to address it. I mean, as I was saying on the phone, my my immigration law profession that I'm working in right now is consuming off all my time, which is why I showed up at 7:31. So you still want to work on it? Or keep it? Yeah, I mean, I keep it as an item for me, but uh, whether or not I can make progress is up to a lot of different factors. Yeah. I have to run. Um, I was just looking around the table at a lot of tired people and wondering if there's any, any agenda items we can push to the next meeting. All just the rest of them? No, we're, I, the rest of it, we ended up, it falls off. I mean, yeah. uh, the last one, the, the, the oh, yeah. residential contract or residential refuse contract, I think the planning board is getting ready to release that soon. That was the last update I got. Um, but I've not yeah. heard anything more. Well, at the last joint meeting on Tuesday, um, this, I think they're pretty much ready to go out proposal to have yeah. one trash company hauler have the contract for the entire awesome. town. What a That's great right. idea. Finally, Instead great of idea. six different companies going down your streets, yeah. you'd have one. Right, and if, if their prices start to go up or something because they have a monopoly, they have to realize that they don't have a monopoly because we could just rebid it. But, but people get better rates, like we said, because they get the whole back. Well, that's the theory. So you'll get a better rate from yeah. them. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. they get the whole contract. Well, the village did this two years ago. They went out to bid, and nobody nobody answered the bid because no one had sat down and talked to the trash hauling company and say what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So they've taken the past year and a half to do that, and they said, you know, well, I think it's great. we need a five year period because we might need to buy a truck. You know, we may need more trucks to service to service this whole area. So those are some of the things. Okay. And originally, it was the village was one zone and the town was another, and 
for whatever reason that was problematical. So um, it's been worked on for several years. I started under Jason West um, and, and the Environmental Policy Commission. Um, I originally forever. worked on this for two years. So, so many different yeah. snags along So that's the, uh, that should be happening. Okay. Just, um, I just want to say before you go, and I'd like to talk about it at the next meeting, um, about styrofoam in the village. I know we have this plastic ban, and the styrofoam uh -huh. is something I'd like to see if I could get involved with and see if our board, like, just want to get some ideas about that. Because I, I think some of the restaurants are still doing that, so I'd like to see what we could do with that. And I mentioned to Rachel, there have been five, I think five times over this year that someone has contacted the village clerk saying so-and-so is using plastic bags, and she calls me, and I go well, down I've there. Called. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I mean, at this point, we should start leaning towards enforcement. I mean, not should be a fine. Should be well, a no, fine. because we, we've been giving warnings for like two years now. I think it's beyond appropriate to start enforcing. Maybe the, law. the newspaper needs to say there'll be a fine now. Yeah. I mean, maybe, so. maybe. I mean, unfortunately, maybe it takes fifteen hundred dollars of taxpayer dollars for a retainer fee for the village attorney to do that one well, the bill of the they would do. But I think it's the cost of. Making that action, I mean, more than symbolic. Why do you need I mean, right now it's purely symbolic because no, no, there's, it's there's used there's to a fire. Yeah, it's a there's there's a oh, no, 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 no. no. I, but I'm saying that it's never been enforced. No yeah. one's ever been So, fine. in the legal realm of things, just there's no precedent for it. It's only really symbolic. <laughs> and, no, and, but I think I think that I think it's, in, standing, it's in yes. there. I think maybe something needs to go in the newspaper that says we've officially. We'll be giving these fines out. So, We've been yeah. giving plenty of warnings from this point on, like from November, you know, December first, whatever. We will be finding people that are giving out plastic bags. Something, you know, I know when I was on the the um, the landmark commission, we had nothing. We had nothing. Like people would just say, "Oops, took down that barn. Sorry," and we had no enforcement. There was no fine. There was nothing. So people just kind of just didn't care. So if we have no strong arm, there's no point in having something like that. Yes, some people did change up. I go into Jack's, and, but it's the plastic bag that goes into the paper bag now. So it's, you know, you go to the health food store, everything's in plastic too. So before it ever gets in the plastic bag, but that's another issue that maybe we can even think about as a group starting to, you know, have our village start writing to companies or something about the way they're packaging everything. So. You know, it starts little. I'll put it on the other for next time. Next time. Next time. Absolutely. Uh, any other old business? Yeah. Any I'm other? I'm oh, sorry. No, no. I any thought other? I want to give away. I think we should do more free samples of the bio. Because that was the better. You still have money is tied up for yeah. nothing. I don't know what the status of that is. You two want to work together and maybe come up with a strategy for next time as to what the next step right. is with the plastic bag issue. All right, Ted, here's some old items. I mean, we, yeah. there's $500 allocated for you have my email this, uh, you know, paint swap thing. Right. Well, what do we do with it? And here's another news. I mean, I'm kind of referring to Ted on chairing in terms of, you know, because he's more attuned to things going on a day to day basis because I'm always in the city. And uh, I mean, I think. I think it's just more appropriate for him, you know, to the MC at the meetings. I mean, I'll chime in here and there, but I think, especially given the subject matter, I think he's more attuned to what's happening. So that's the, that, you, you were asking me about that. Yeah. yeah. If you want to make it more formal, tell the village board we'll point him short chair. And yeah. Good to see you all. Good to sleep too. Okay, so yeah, no, send me an email. Thanks, Dad. Long night. Uh, yeah. Nice. We've been doing this for a while now. Like first they were, they had you know the canvas bag and the polyester bag. Now it's a white brick bag. Isn't that what the health food store gives them? Yeah. I don't know. No, because they have a bag that you can get in. I'm sure it's not a composition. It must be. But I've got one. I got it. I just didn't want. When he said it, was like, yeah, that's a good idea. It's a yeah. Maybe it's not in here. Yeah, it used to be a quarter. Each page is a dome PDF because. That's why it's a 3.1 megabyte. They don't want to bring their own bag. Right. So, no, but I've got it. Just send it to yeah, me. and I'll just uh, with the with the response we sent back you know, based on this meeting. It's, 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 it's like purely for take care, yeah. Susan. Take care, Rachel. It's purely for information purposes. Yeah, but I'm glad you're making progress on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wish I was here more often. That <laughs> make more time, but it's ridiculous with my commute. Yeah. 
Good luck, no. Yeah, thank you. Guys, I, I need more time. I, I need more time. There's never more time. It's ridiculous. The struggle of life, right?